Hey guys, my name is Catherine Barner, host of Cats Cadenza, and today I'm at Tree Fort Music Festival in Boise, Idaho with Matt Hopper. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, I w- just got up, <laughs> performed a sh- uh, solo show at one, and I wish I could take a nap, but today's a busy day for us. Yeah, I totally, I totally feel that. <sighs> so, how are you enjoying Boise so far? Love it. Uh, I lived here for six years, and it's a beautiful place. I actually played the first Tree Fort, and it's cool to see how far it's come over the seven years and it's it's done a really transformative thing for the community here mm-hmm. and uh, i'm really glad that i got to be a part of it a lot you know through the first seven mm-hmm. years and it's always good to be back got a lot of friends here got mm-hmm. a lot of got a lot of fans got a lot of uh, good vibes you know so have you played every tree fort then no no we i don't there's two tree forts i think we haven't played but um you know once in a while it feels good to take a break from tree fort mm-hmm. um because my feed still blows up, my social media, because a lot of my friends live here. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, like, um, there's certain things. Like, I live in Phoenix in the winters now, okay. and um, I've been doing that for about five years. And there's a lot of cool things that go on in Phoenix, too, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, I'm going to be missing out on because you're up here or whatever. But, um, I don't know. I'm starting to ramble already. Let's stay. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay focused here. Bo- Boise is an amazing place. If you've never been here, it's worth visiting for sure. So you've been playing music for a very long time, mm-hmm. since the 90s. So how has <laughs> – cor- that's what I saw on your Facebook yeah, page, yeah. Is correct? Okay. Yeah, I think I started playing guitar in 96. So um, by 1999, I had started putting bands together and was performing so how songs. So how has your influences changed over those years? My influences? Uh how has it changed? Uh, you know, I have access to everything now, mm-hmm. so that's changed a lot of uh, how I, uh, the way I listen to music now is Spotify, and I'm an artist, I know they don't pay very much, blah, 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 but it's the future, and mm-hmm. the future is not always positive and bright, you know? Um, the cool thing is that it's it's a free promotion tool. If you can get people to start listening to you, then they'll come to the show, which uh, it used to be, Nobody could find out about you unless they came to the show and yeah. got your CD, right? So it's like just like a backwards setup. Where the people find you online and then yeah. they come to your show. And they, may, they might just be like, hey, I can't stop listening to your music. They are, get so excited when you're coming to town. They mm-hmm. tell their friends. They put it online. And then they'll come and like buy a T-shirt. Or maybe – we're not even going to make a CD of our, of our new album. So um, I just figured I'd save a couple thousand dollars that way and not have to carry that stuff around. Mm-hmm. And I can just maybe uh, we're gonna do like maybe a poster and some mm-hmm. stickers, you know. Yeah. Um, Speaking y- of your new album, yeah, you guys released a new single, uh, "Sentimental Love," on February twenty second. Can you tell us a little bit about that song sure. and what it's about? Sentimental love is a love song. <laughs> 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 it's about being. It's about the innocent kind of love, and um, uh, it, it's a really poppy tune. It just sounds nice. Uh, it's, it, I got Charity and Maddie from the Head and the Heart to sing on it. They're a couple. They're mm-hmm. married. Um, so what the unique thing about this song is that they sing to each other oh. with me. It's like a, it's a threesome uh, with me in the middle. Uh, <laughs> You're like narrating their love story in a, s- in a sense. Well, in a way, it's a, it's a song about, you know, it's do I make your heart fly up to the sky? Do I make your palm? It's about those feelings of when you, when you get that really exciting, like you're kind of nervous mm-hmm. and things are happening and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it's all happening. <laughs> it hits you and you like, you know, you try to not say the wrong thing and mm-hmm. uh, let it flow naturally and all that stuff. But there was a certain kind of feeling when you first start falling in love and before your heart's shattered into a million pieces and then you got to start over and maybe this one doesn't work out and you know all the trials and tribulations mm-hmm. of being in love and trying to stay in love and figure out what that's all about yeah because I, I i'm used to being on the road and alone and just do my own thing and my mom's like you're kind of selfish like you just focus on you and you know you're gonna need to figure that out if you ever want to like you know keep yeah. a woman around you know or whatever um but the uh, the songs got Maddie singing on like the first verse, and then Charity comes in on the second line, and then he's back on the third line, and she's back on the fourth. And it was just super cute to mm-hmm. do that session with them, and and uh, all of us got into the the mood and had a good time. And 
But um, we actually released four more songs since then. Oh, okay. They just came out. Uh, on St. Patrick's Day, we put up an EP. So it's basically the first half of the record. It's so available right now on our website. So what can the audience expect from that rest of the record, um, aside from Sentimental Love? Um, well, Sentimental Love is the third track on the record. Uh, the first song is kind of like a Creedence Clearwater style tune, which I actually recorded in San Francisco at what was what used to be Cosmos Factory, which was a Creedence album. Um, it's the exact room they worked in. And, That's really cool. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a fun thing. Like I, I met the guy that runs the studio a couple years ago, and it's like I want to come do at least a song there, mm-hmm. you know. And I picked the most credency sounding song. Yeah, it's kind of like upbeat. So that's the first track. It's called "All the Love." That's what the EP is also called. Um, second song on it is called "Midnight Moonride." Um, I actually wrote that on a Tinder date a couple <laughs> years ago. Um, it was my fun idea. She had the day off, and we had been hanging out already a couple times. But it was like, hey, like, why don't you just come over? You have the day off. Like, I was living in a really nice place with like a pool and private pool and I was like just come hang like let's mm-hmm. just chill and so we <laughs> I brought it up I'm like well the, like, we, here's what I do for fun I write songs uh-huh. do you want to try to and she was cool very cool person and uh-huh. her and I are still friends and stuff but um, we literally co-wrote a song like you know she helped that's me really cool the lyrics has she ever written a song before she I guess dabbled in it a little okay. bit uh, she dated to get another guy that um, was a musician in Phoenix and uh, um she really likes Father John Misty. I remember that. She kept talking about Father John Misty. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to, to Josh Tillman. Um, that's like her, you know, mm-hmm. her uh, guy that she would, you know, do that thing with if yeah. she ever had a chance to do that thing with. So when can the audience expect that album to come out? Um, probably this summer is what we're thinking. We're going to probably... Re- so I'm from Alaska originally. Uh-huh. Like that's where I grew up. So... We always tour there in the summertime, and it's nice to get out of the heat and just be home for a while and, like, mm-hmm. see my nephews. And so we're going to probably do a full-length release by then. Or I was like, it's a, if it's digital, maybe we'll just do another EP. Just, like, here's the second half of the album. Mm-hmm. And just keep going with that. Like, every – we actually have another four or five songs that we recorded in New York that are coming out in the future. Um, and I have inten- more intentions of getting back in the studio over the next year and a half. So – we're just going to keep putting out stuff, and we're going to try to tour as much as we can. Mm-hmm. And All of our dates are up on the, the RomanCandles.com. You can go there to listen to the album. Um, you can download it through our Bandcamp if you want to actually physically have the digital files. Otherwise, you can stream it for free. And You know, come see a show. Um, yep. There's a there's a couple more songs to talk about. Like Midnight Moonride, I, I, we wrote it with this gal. But then, but I ended up recording it, and I got Courtney J to sing on it. She's an amazing singer, based out of LA right now. And um, and then the third track's got Charity and Maddie on it. The fourth track is called Firecracker. It's like a it's a really rocking tune, um, in like that Neil Young and Crazy Horse style, mm-hmm. like a really noisy, loud, fast. But like um, the lyrics are about it's called Firecracker, which is a central theme of my music. Um, my band's named after the a Jack Kerouac quote from On the Road. Okay. Um, about firecrack, uh, Roman candles exploding in the sky and the mm-hmm. mad people, people that are mad to live and desirous of everything at the same time. And like, I I got that when I read On the Road, I got his characters. I understand them. I I've, I've met those characters, and that's why I like the beat writers because mm-hmm. they were writing about a really interesting time in history. Um, but I named my band the Roman Candles after that quote, and so. To come full circle and write a song called Firecracker years and years later about blowing it up, about lighting the mm-hmm. fuse, about going for it and not just sitting on the shelf all the time and, yeah. be, and getting dusty and giving up and watching Netflix all weekend. And, you know, like yeah. there's all these things people are doing now that's, that's making us really like inclusive and it's not about social people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yet we have access to all the communication from our fingertips. Mm-hmm. Um, I just went three weeks without a phone and had like a really good time not being tethered yeah to it because you're, li- you're living in the moment instead of living on your phone it was cool it was cool to go back to that and mm-hmm. feel it for a while i i got a new phone somebody gave me one co- about a week ago and um they said they could see the stress like sink in as all my messages rolled in oh no i realized there's multiple gigs that people were upset because i didn't 
call them back and they didn't know I didn't have a phone. And you know, it's a business tool that I need. Yeah. Um, the maps function is really important when you're in Atlanta, Georgia, and you've never been there. You know, like yeah. it's really nice just punch in the address and just follow the directions. Mm -hmm. But we, for, I think, you know, younger kids are, they're gonna be completely lost if their phone gets broken or yeah. drops in the water. It's like, how do we get there? It's like, you gotta go north and then yeah. left on 6th Street. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid. The address, the 314, you know. Yeah, when I was a kid and my parents and I did road trips, we'd have like this atlas, like just this thick, like yeah. huge, sitting in the car in case we got lost. And well, it's remember totally Mac different. West? At least yep. we could print out the directions at the beginning of the internet. Oh, yeah. I remember always printing out directions before yeah. I went anywhere. We our packets for the tour. <laughs> like, okay, let's leave Tulsa. Let's head north. You know? Yeah, how to print out everything and make yeah. sure everything's planned. Yeah. So getting back to that, like, that's uh, that's something to think about. It's definitely part of my uh, – what, what I'm thinking about is I'm trying to write for the future, for the present, learn from the past, mm -hmm. always be educating myself, always be reading, learning, um, not just – fiction but nonfiction and mm -hmm. history and interesting things yeah. and I have a lot of free time because I'm a musician mm -hmm. like I work at night if I get up early I got quite a few hours in the day to to uh, educate my my brain and work mm -hmm. on my body mm -hmm. staying healthy yep I got time for all that yeah a lot of people uh, work their entire life to just be able to go travel a little bit before they die and I'll be out there at these beautiful places and I look around and I'm like, everybody else here is in their 60s, 70s. I'm, I just turned 40, but I'm, you know, all through my late 20s and my 30s, I've been on the road. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm getting to go to these places at a young age, and I have no stress in my life because how hard is it to show up, set up your guitar, and play your songs? Yeah. Collect your gas money, and uh, you know, sell a few CDs. Yeah. And move on to the next spot. It's it's a cool lifestyle. Um, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Uh, it can be hard. It's hard when you fall in love or you want to have a kid or something. It's, it would change everything. But mm -hmm. I'm like just reaching that point where I'm like, oh, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. it's, I've had my fun. I've <laughs> traveled all over the world. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm gonna go to a different um, setup soon, probably. And I don't know. It's hard for me to settle. It's hard for me to settle. Yeah, like, especially after you've experienced all that. You just yeah. kind of want to keep doing it. Yeah, I lived in Portland for the last two years. Um, I live in Phoenix in the winters. I live in Alaska in the summers. Um, get a, I've gotten over to Europe three, multiple times. Um, did like four shows in Switzerland last year. Did a lot of vacationing in the Mediterranean. and uh, Went to France, south of France. Mm -hmm. Went to Basque Country. We're playing the Basque Center tonight for the Tree Fort. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I've been to Basque Country already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got to go there. Yeah. So, cool. so what advice would you give to younger musicians who are just starting off oh their man. career? Well, uh, be nice to everyone you can. Shake hands. I, I've been telling my bandmates. This is my bandmates from Alaska's first tour, uh -huh. and they're out with me. They're having fun. I'm definitely the dad <laughs> of the group. You know, yeah. keeping it together. I make sure I'm sober every night to drive the van, and you know. Um, there's things that people don't think about. So mm -hmm. what I tell them is like, I was like, you're a tree for it. Like there's 400 bands here. Everybody around you is either working at the festival or in a band. Mm -hmm. Like introduce yourself, mm -hmm. go see some shows, find out where they're from, see if we can play there with them. Like we we're going to play with maybe Billy Moon in Toronto. Mm -hmm. You know, just a band we happened to see. We liked them and boom, like let's do it. Let's, let's go to Toronto. Yeah this year and play with you guys you know yeah. and so just uh networking is really important always honing your craft um keep your eyes open keep keep your ears open listen to everybody learn from everybody mm -hmm. learn from everything so where can the audience connect with you online i'm gonna look at the camera for this one <laughs> m-a-t-t-h-o-p-p-e-r.com i am one of 15 matt hoppers that i've discovered on the planet earth that's not very helpful when people are trying to find you. But I'm the one who owns MattHopper.com. Wow. Okay. You're a special person to and be able to own your name. Yep. It's not Seattle Jazz or Matt Hopper. It's not Kansas City Jazz guitarist Matt Hopper. It's not Australian uh, rugby player Matt Hopper. It's Matt Hopper, the guy that was born in Phoenix, raised in Alaska, and plays music, blah, blah, blah. You know. Yeah. Also, the RomanCandles.com is the band website. And uh, we actually have a new website coming down the pipeline from a really cool graphic designer that I've known forever. And he's just doing it. He's like a really artsy guy. And mm -hmm. I, 
he's going to surprise me with a new design soon. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so that'll be out sometime this year. And yeah, we're going to try to make some music videos and uh, we'll see you out there at a show. We're going to be playing all over the United States and who knows where else this year. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. If you at home enjoyed this video, make sure to go down below and click that like and subscribe button. I do tons of videos like this with awesome artists just like Matt. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.